One time in my high school science class, our teacher lit a candle, and she asked us a really simple question. Is this alive? I mean, obviously it's not alive, and we all agreed to that, but then she asked us to explain why it's not alive. And then things got interesting. Well, it can't think, so obviously it's not alive. Jellyfish don't have brains, are you gonna say they're not alive? And what about trees? Well, maybe they can't think, but they can react to the environment. Looks like it's reacting to me. Well, a living thing has to eat to survive. It has to consume things. This flame is consuming the candle wick, the wax, and the oxygen in the air to survive. It doesn't reproduce. Living things have to reproduce. Now this was just a high school science exercise, but it touches on a question that's surprisingly complex and increasingly difficult and important to answer. Chris Young asked, what is life? How can we actually define something as living? The physicist Erwin Schrodinger defined life this way. He said, living things avoid decay into disorder and equilibrium. In the simplest terms, this means that living things are constantly rearranging their constituent parts in order to maintain their present condition. Take a human cell, for example. It's a living thing, but it's made up of non-living things. It's basically just a protein-based machine that turns sugar molecules into ATP and pulls organic compounds out of this soup to create RNA and DNA. None of the parts of the cell are anything that we would call alive, but the cell definitely is. And of course, the RNA and the DNA go on to create whole new people that continue it on for a whole new generation. And that's actually one definition of life. It's called the information theory. DNA is basically just a set of information, and this theory states that life exists to perpetuate this information. But as Chris pointed out in his question, viruses pass their information along, but viruses aren't considered to be alive because they don't actively resist the decay into disorder. They're more like keys that just kind of drift along until they snap into a lock, a lock being the receptor sites on cells. Bacteria are considered a type of life because they do actively seek out cells to invade and do follow some kind of order. But to cloud things a little bit, the mitochondria in our cells, it's believed, used to be a standalone bacteria that then way, way back in our evolution invaded a single cell organism and then just became an organelle, just a part of that cell. And now they're not considered to be alive. So this simple question of what is life is actually really complicated, and nobody really knows quite sure how to answer it. And ironically, now more than ever, we really need to have an answer to this. We're more engaged than ever before in the search for life outside of Earth. You know, we're roving around on Mars, we're landing on comets, we're finding planets and other solar systems. If we found life somewhere outside of here, it would be a huge game changer. But where do you draw the line? How do you know for sure that what you found is actual life and not just an assemblage of organic compounds? Besides, the only life that we know of evolved right here on Earth. Would we even know a different kind of life if we saw it? And speaking of primitive life, the way we define this actually makes a drastic change in when life started here on Earth. You know, they actually just recently pushed back the time frame that they believe that life began by about 2 billion years, which actually means that life started really fast. Artificial intelligence is progressing at a really fast rate. At what point do we consider that to be some kind of life? Are we really just an assemblage of non-living things that happen to develop a consciousness? Maybe the real mind-blowing question is, on a fundamental level, does life exist at all? Or is everything life? Once upon a time, we separated ourselves from the animal kingdom. We thought we were special. As science progressed, we began to understand that actually we're very connected to all the other animal species around the world. Maybe we're on the cusp of another fundamental shift in consciousness where we understand that not only are we not different from the animals, but we're not different from everything else. From the rocks and the trees to the other planets and stars all around the universe, we're all the same stuff. So what do you think? Is there something special about life itself or is it just an inevitable process of chemistry and physics? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks everybody for watching. If this is interesting to you, I've got some other videos I'm gonna link down in the description that actually do a really good job of explaining this topic. Definitely go check them out. Thanks a lot for watching. If you learned something, hit the thumbs up button. And if this is your first time here and you like it, put a ring on it and subscribe. I come back every Monday with videos just like this to blow your mind. If you have a question you'd like answered, ask it down in the comments below or hit me up at Joe Scott Writer on Twitter and we can get smarter together. I always say the world's a fascinating place and I'm here to bring all that interestingness to you. So you guys go out there, have an eye-opening week. And I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Love you guys. Take care.